Frank eat brain. Make Frank smart. Is there any truth to the belief that some indigenous people held, our ancestors, hunter-gatherers, native tribes, in eating certain parts of the animal to give you certain health properties? We know our brains are composed of cholesterol, DHA, omega-3 fatty acids, various vitamins and minerals, but if we consume an animal brain that has a similar nutrient profile to ourselves, wouldn't it make sense that we are nourishing that part of our body? Now, of course, this doesn't apply to every single tissue. You know, eating the skin of an animal doesn't make your body produce more collagen and heal your skin. That's a little bit different, but there is a lot of truth in the context of consuming high omega-3 sources from nature. Brains might have actually been a food that we consumed that fueled our evolution. If you think about it, if we scavenged a corpse, perhaps the skull of the animal was the only thing not broken into by the predator, so we come along with a tool or a rock, we crack it open and get this high DHA content. There's examples of humans eating gazelle brains in the past. This could have also been from shellfish or fish as well though. There's plenty of sources of fish in nature. It's just a question of what would have been the most easiest to access for primitive humans. And caloric context is important here. Something like animal brains is very high in calories. If you killed a large animal or any animal, the brain is where a lot of the fat is concentrated, a lot of the nutrition is concentrated. The calories, getting shellfish, getting fish, even things like eggs aren't necessarily super high in fat nutrition. And one thing common throughout all humans in all periods of history is a high fat consumption from animal foods. If we're not getting our energy from fat in nature, where are we getting our energy? Onto the actual beef brains. Brains are incredibly high, as we mentioned, in DHA, omega-3 fatty acids, super high in cholesterol. Every cell in your body is cholesterol. This is so important to consume. Brains are also the best source of vitamin C and vitamin E in most cases. And as with any quality animal food, we can assume there's a vitamin K2 content in this food. This website that I used is in German, and although it has better nutrient testing than the United States databases, it is still not complete. Uh, one interesting thing about brains is that it also has a slightly higher sodium content than other foods, as our brain stores sodium as well. This also affects the palatability. Naturally, if you had every single part of an animal in its raw state, the brain would be one of the better tasting parts, believe it or not. Now, Frank, what about prions? Are you going to get a prion disease from consuming brain tissue? A prion is a misfolded protein, and it essentially turns your brain into cheese. It's a horrible, horrible disease. Prions cannot be killed. You can heat them to whatever temperature. You can freeze them to whatever temperature. You can't wash them out of the environment. There's a couple of things to be concerned about. First is that if an animal has a prion disease, it's contained in all tissues of the animal. Although it's concentrated more in the brain and the spinal cord of the animal, if a cow had mad cow disease, it would be in every single steak, every single tissue on the animal would have the prion disease. The form of prion disease that occurs in cows is mad cow disease. This was never able to be given to humans until the disease mutated. Uh, I don't really know the specifics on how it mutated. I've heard theories that they fed prion-infected sheep meat or something to cows, and then the disease mutated. Uh, the form that occurs in humans is called Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease. That can be obtained just genetically, or you can get it from human-infected brain tissue. I don't know if you're a surgeon, whatever it is. The form that occurs in goats and lambs is called scrapey because the animals literally will scrape their skin off when they get the disease. Pigs are immune to the disease. And some humans are actually immune to Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease as well. A cow cannot get mad cow disease if it is less than three years of age. All animals for the most part in the United States are slaughtered younger than that for this reason, so they can't actually develop mad cow disease. Every single diagnosis of mad cow disease in the United States was from someone who consumed meat 
from another country. So if I told you that no one has literally gotten mad cow disease from eating meat in the United States, you'd be like, okay, why am I bothering Frank about this prion disease? Is it a concern? I think there's a lot of research and a lot of understanding that needs to be done about this, but by no means am I concerned about consuming this beef brain today. I know the animal was less than three years of age. I did a separate video on bacteria, parasites, problems with raw meat, where I did touch on prion diseases. There's also an excellent Joe Rogan podcast on chronic wasting disease in deer that I put in that video. I will link that towards the end. But let's get to the focus of the video. Let's eat some brains. So Frankie boy, why don't you eat something normal for your omega-3 fatty acids? Perhaps fish or eggs? Well, I don't really like fish. I'm allergic to eggs. Maybe I wouldn't be allergic if I raised my own chickens. Uh, the other concern is that a lot of eggs are high in omega-6 because of what they feed the animal. In most cases, the omega-6 is very high, the nutrient profile isn't ideal, the chickens aren't kept in the best conditions, and they're feeding them you know, corn and soy, a bunch of crap. So for me, brain has tons of omega-3s, cholesterol, it actually reminds me of eggs, and I do sincerely enjoy the taste of brain. So for me, this is how I get my omega-3s, how I get my DHA from a food I'm not allergic to that I actually like. Of course, I don't eat this raw usually, guys. Uh, actually, well, that's not true. Most of the time for the past few years, I've always swallowed down brain raw. Recently, <laughs> I've always swallowed, I've always swallowed some head raw. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, guys. Uh, what I did recently was I put this in a pan and I seared it and I really liked the taste. Uh, throwing this on the grill isn't that good. Uh, but here we have, uh, you know, the brain is unfortunately in half. I would have loved to have the whole brain, but usually in order to break open the skull of the animal, they run it through a bandsaw. You know, I mean, in nature, if you were to crack open the skull of an animal, you'd have brain tissue all over the place. It's very messy. This stuff gets on your hands like crazy. Uh, it's very hard to clean off utensils. Uh, something about a food having a high cholesterol amount, uh, that cholesterol in the food really attaches to things. I don't know why, but we're gonna do this in a little more civilized of a way, and then we're gonna sear it up and eat it how I actually enjoy it. So I think I'm just gonna have maybe this tiny piece first. I've never actually had beef brain before. I've only had lamb brain. Now, I paid $24 for this beef brain. And normally I would say I can't really afford that. It's crazy expensive, but I'm looking at this beef brain. This is like the equivalent of four or five lamb brains, but I pay like $5 per lamb head. So technically I'm actually spending about the same amount of money. It's just not what I normally do. The difference between this and the lamb brain, it has a slight, slight, slight hint of beefy flavor, whereas the lamb brain, I could taste the lamb on it. I didn't really like that. It's richer, it has more flavor, more body to it. I really like this a lot. Uh, let's throw it in a pan, sear it up, and, uh, and give it a taste. Okay, so I just have my pan here. This is a pot of uh, grass-fed beef tallow that I rendered. So I'm sure my grandmother could tell you stories about how she used to eat brains and how her, you know, father used to fry brains and flour and butter, but I don't eat flour because I'm on the carnivore diet. What's very important for searing something is having a nice dry surface. The surface of this is actually very dried out because how it was sitting in the container. Otherwise, you really have to pat this dry with a paper towel to make sure that when you put it in the pan, you get a nice little crust on it. And we don't want this to be too hot. Now normally would I eat this much brain in a day? Eh, no. Uh, this is probably a bit more than twice as much as what I would normally have. Pan should be warmed up. So cooking temperature, we were definitely going for rare. I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt on this side. I'm gonna flip it over. See, since, since the surface was nice and dry, we got a really quick nice browning crust. 
And guys, that, that might have looked pretty easy to do, but make sure the surface of the brain or whatever you're searing is as dry as possible. Otherwise, you're essentially gonna steam the meat. What also helps is moving it around in the pan. I think this would be really delicious in butter, but I'm allergic to dairy, so go figure. Right, guys here we have the fried beef brain nice brown crust inside's a little raw but we were eating it raw anyway listen you guys are allergic to eggs and you miss eggs. Get your hands on some brains. Because to me, I never need to eat eggs again in my life if I have this. This is like, the best way to describe this is eating slightly beef flavored egg yolks from a like texture perspective. It's so rich. It's like rich, it's creamy. Yet still very mild in flavor. I just dropped a dollar fifty of deep rice on the ground. See that guys? That's a dollar thirty-two bite. <laughs> so unfortunately, beef brains are illegal in most parts of the country, to my understanding. I know you can get lamb brain or goat brain at like a local halal butcher, maybe even like pork brain at an Asian market. Guys, this is not something that's too easy to find. Uh, I have a hard time getting it myself. That's why I just did a video on it now. So uh, of course, we do have the other alternatives for DHA. The only reason I would seek this out at all is you're allergic to eggs, you don't like fish, and you really want to get a good source of DHA in your diet. Uh, I mean, even like dairy or really high quality raw dairy, pastured eggs, to me, so much more approachable, so much easier to do. I'll put some resources in the comments down below. Eat wild as well as local harvest. You might be able to find farms on that website that will sell this to you. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, share the video if you can. Down below is also my Amazon shop where you will find vitamin D3 supplements and foods like cod liver oil that are great sources of DHA. There's also my Patreon, which is the best way to support me if you want to ask personalized questions on there. I'm on Twitter, guys. I'm on Instagram. If you guys do want to go to my website, frank-stefano.com, you'll see my hygiene products. And you'll also be able to reach out to me for a consultation in regards to improving your overall health. If you are interested in anything from diet to exercise, water, sun, you name it.